Could this weekend be a big weekend for the big guys up front? Tennessee's going to host an offensive lineman this weekend. Still waiting on to hear from Lance Hurd. How much better could the offensive line be this time, say, Monday morning? That, a whole lot more. It's your Friday Locked On Vols. You are Locked On Vols, your daily podcast on the Tennessee Volunteers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. A good Friday morning, everybody. It's Locked On Vols, and I am Eric Kane. Appreciate you for being here. You can follow me on Twitter at underscore Kaner and the show at Locked On Vols. Quick programming note, do want to make mention uh, that um, I'm going to be on vacation, going to be out of the country next week. So uh, if you've been following along on the uh, YouTube channel, you've seen some shows that are scheduled to be premiered at, at various times next week. I've gone ahead and pre-recorded every show next week, so you will have something for that morning commute. Uh, but I want to be up front. I'm going to be out of the country. Not going to have my microphone with me. Um, I'll have my phone in my hand. But, um, you know, anything big, anything that happens while I'm gone, I will be sure to spend extensive time on it the following week, uh, a couple of days after. And we'll talk about it right here on Locked On Ball. So how different could the Tennessee football team be by the next time um, I talk behind a microphone? We'll see. But again, Monday through Friday next week, you will have something for Locked On Balls. Um, today's show, Transfer Portal Offensive Line Help. Tennessee's set to host a transfer uh, via the offensive line uh, here this weekend. How close is that to being done? What about the latest that Lance heard? Uh, Vol haters. One coach, actually two coaches, but one coach you could probably guess, failed to list Tennessee on its final coaches poll. Um, you're talking about two coaches in the entire country. Seven AP voters failed to, ten- to, to rank Tennessee in the final AP poll. Um, four of which ranked Iowa, but did not rank Tennessee. You're going to get into that here in segment number two and then get you set for Tennessee at Georgia in segment number three. All right. So Tennessee is set to host Mississippi state offensive line transfer Percy Lewis this weekend, six foot eight, 345 pounds. He's a guy that can play left tackle, uh, probably could play right tackle as well. In 2023, he had 437 snaps. He logged. 41 snaps against Ole Miss in the Egg Bowl, 62 snaps against Southern Miss in the non-conference play, kind of going in reverse order here. Against a and he logged 39 snaps, 57 snaps against Kentucky, 40 snaps against Auburn, 35 snaps against Arkansas, 44 snaps against Western Michigan, 33 against Alabama, 34 against South Carolina. And then the first three weeks of the season, you can tell he was not moved into that starting role. 25 snaps against Southeast Louisiana, I guess who that is. Um, eight snaps against Arizona and 19 snaps against LSU. Um, uh, again, this is a guy that is experienced. It's a guy that um, can bring you know a, a little bit to the table. Whereas Tennessee's off into tackles, you have John Campbell, and then you have Dane Davis right now. And, and behind those guys, sure you have Sham Yamaro, but you know how close is he ready to to helping out? You got Bennett Warren coming in. That's probably the most ready of your freshman offensive lineman to helping Aiden Bustle, a freshman from last year. He's more of a guard, but he's been getting some reps in tackle Larry Johnson, the Juco signee from last year's cycle. I'm not sure that he's ready to help my point being, and again, this is nothing new here. We talk about it all the time. Tennessee doesn't have any depth at offensive tackle. And you look at this past season, Tennessee started much, you know, for, for the past two seasons, they've wanted Gerald Mincy to be the guy. And he's never started out as being the guy, but he eventually became the guy. Of course, Gerald Mincy's gone now, but my point is you had John Campbell to start on the left side. You had J.J. Crawford that started on the right side. As the year went on, you had John Campbell on the left. You had Gerald Mincy on the right. There was injuries involved, meaning J.J. Crawford got mixed back into the rotation. So did Dane Davis, who started and played a lot towards the end of the season. Tennessee needed four offensive tackles in 2023. It's not ideal, but that's what Tennessee needed. 2021, if you remember, um, you had Cooper Mays that went down with some injuries, and you had to you had to make do there. Cooper Mays went down with injuries in 23. Uh, tackles went down with some injuries in 23. So, you know, you don't want a true offensive line rotation, which is kind of what Tennessee was doing at the beginning of the year. But towards the end of the year, you needed all those guys, and so you want to be prepared for the worst, but you also want to create some competition. You know, John Campbell's there, Dane Davis is there. You bring in, you maybe you close this weekend with Percy Lewis and Mississippi State. And again, things can always change. 
maybe we hear a, a final announcement from Lance Hurd by the time this airs. And maybe if that happens, maybe you don't bring in Percy Lewis. Maybe you continue to bring in Percy Lewis as an insurance policy. Whatever the case is, you need to add bodies. You need to add competition and you need to add growth of that, uh, that tackle position. So, you know, Percy Lewis, I wouldn't say that he's an all American. I know pro football focus is something. It's not everything. He had a grade of 66.6 this year, which is a solid starter grade. You know, it's not all conference, not all American, but he is a guy that has been super experienced. He's a guy that can come in and probably play day one if he were to join this class. So Percy Lewis is going to be on campus this weekend. Tennessee going to host him via the transfer portal, and we will see what happens. Now, what's the latest in Lance Hurd? If you're a VolQuest.com uh, subscriber and member, you have a pretty good idea of what's the latest with Lance Hurd. Uh, feels like Tennessee's in a pretty good spot, um, at least as of really Wednesday night through Thursday. We'll see exactly kind of where this is as the hours go along. The longer this drags out, the more angst it creates, recognizing that. But it feels like Tennessee's in a pretty good position until it's not. And you guys know that this can change by the minute. It always does. But if Tennessee were to land Lance Hurd, that would be massive. Just massive. Um, and, and we'll see what happens. You land Lance Hurd, he's going to play left tackle. You would flip John Campbell over to the right side, which... The entire year, it was John Campbell's a left tackle. John Campbell's a left tackle. You moved Gerald Mincy over. And so, I mean, I just think that, and it's hard if you're, you know, John Campbell's like 30 years old because he's been in college going on seven years. But when you're a young guy, you know, you got people feeding you information and everything, but also just the perception, man. You go to the league, you play left tackle, you get paid. And so you understand why these guys want to play left tackle. You get it. But again, all you have to do is point to Darnell Wright. He was a right tackle. He Versatility. Played left tackle in 2022, 2021, actually. Uh, but you got versatility there. But he played right tackle in 2022, went on and got drafted 10th overall. He's making tons of money. He started, I believe, barring injury, every game in the NFL this year for the Chicago Bears. So you, you got to get out of that mindset, in my opinion. But no ifs, ands, buts about it. Tennessee has got to get some help on the offensive line. Has got to get some help on the offensive line just for numbers' sake at tackle and also for competition's sake. Uh, because if Tennessee is going to get back to being a more of the 2022 version of that offense with Nico Iamaliava, you need to keep him upright. You need to keep him protected. So we'll see what happens. Of course, J.J. Crawford has exhausted his eligibility. Gerald Mincy entered the transfer portal because, of course, now with that court ruling, you can enter the portal as many times as you want. So he's gone. And I'll continue to say this. I mean, Gerald Mincy wasn't a choir boy. Gerald Mincy, I'm sure, had some headaches at the time. Gerald Mincy, Josh Hopple can say whatever he wants to, but he was suspended to, for playing offense in the Florida game. He played on PAT and field goal team, right? But his punishment was he was not allowed to play offense that game. Um, and that's a bummer because that was a big game. And I'm not saying Tennessee lost that game because Gerald Mincy wasn't playing right tackle, but he could have probably helped some, right? Um, but again, I'll, I'll continue to say, man, towards the end of the year, he was on one leg. He was He was playing through injury, but he was playing. And he was giving you everything he had. And I, for one, gained a lot of respect for him watching him do that. Um, he's not a guy that, again, all SEC, he's not a guy that's an All-American, but he's a guy that you would rather have had coming back on this offensive line than seeing him gone. And so that just makes it all the more important that you've got to land Lance Hurd. You've got to finish, get to the finish line, and solidify Lance Hurd, the former five-star prospect, the former top-rated prospect signee with LSU in the class of 2023. Got a little bit of playing time as a freshman, not a whole lot. LSU returns four offensive line starters, and so he's looking for greener pastures. Feels like Tennessee's in a good spot here. We will see if Tennessee can close again. All this at uh, about Thursday evening at the time of this recording. Okay, so Percy Lewis, can Tennessee move the needle with the former Mississippi State offensive lineman? We will see. He'll be on campus this weekend for an official visit via the transfer portal, and uh, we'll see what happens there right here on Locked On Balls. Coming up next, Vol Haters. You don't want to miss this next segment. NFL regular season is wrapped up. Wild Card Weekend, it's coming up this weekend. It's going to be so much fun. One of my favorite weekends on the sports calendar because you get some really, really good competitive football games. You're into conference play with basketball in the college landscape. NBA is going on right now. NASCAR is just a little over a month away from getting going. Oh, yeah, so is college baseball. 
Get prepared, get ready to roll, plus join in the fun this weekend over at FanDuel Sportsbook. FanDuel Sportsbook, if you're a new customer, you can get 150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. It's pretty easy. That's 150 bucks in bonus bets if you win or if you lose. All you got to do is do locked on or FanDuel.com slash locked on, that promo code locked on for 150 bucks, win or lose. Prop bets, same game parlays, total spreads, um, it's just so much fun. Put some coin in your pocket. Have fun while watching the game. Give yourself something to pay attention to and to do. That's over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Safe, secure, easy to use app. FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel.com slash locked on. It is the official partner of the NFL. So, Vol haters, where am I going to go with this one, right? Well, I already kind of teased it there to begin the show. You know, this is locked on balls. Okay, I pride myself in being, I pride myself in being, you know, as I said earlier in the week, right? I mean, straight to the point, call a spade a spade is what it is. Um, I try not to be overly negative, but I also try not to look through everything with orange shaded sunglasses, right? Um, but at the end of the day, this is locked on Vols. You are Vols fans. You are Tennessee fans. You come here for entertainment. You come here to, to learn a little bit, and I hope I provide that for you guys. Um but with this next segment, we're going to put on those orange shade of sunglasses just a little bit. All right, guys, if you'll allow me. Vol haters. Vol haters. They're everywhere, right? Seven voters from the Associated Press. Seven AP voters left Tennessee off their final ballots for the final AP poll. All right, yeah, eight and four is not going to hang any banners. Nine and four is not going to hang any banners. But it's not a horrible football season. It's not. And the way you finish the season with the way some teams looked in, in, in New York Six Bowl games in front of you, but the way you finish the season in dominating fashion against a team, say what you want about them playing in the worst division in college football. I hear you. I hear that. But you whooped a team 35 to nothing that played for a Big Ten title this year. Okay? 35 to nothing was that final score in the Citrus Bowl, which is a step below a New Year Six. Okay? Um, you finished strong yet seven voters for the AP poll didn't think that it was good enough and left Tennessee off those ballots. All right. Is what it is Four of those seven who left Tennessee off their final ballots ranked Iowa ahead of Tennessee. Now Iowa finished the year 10 and four. Okay. Bowl game conference championship, two extra games. You know, fall on a 12 game regular season, 10 and four double digit wins. Okay. It is a solid football team. In my opinion, it got spanked though. It got spanked. What have you done for me lately? It got spanked by the eventual national champion is what it is. Michigan 26 to nothing. Okay. And then it got drilled by Tennessee 35 to nothing. So let's do some math here. Where's my pen? All right, let's go 26 plus 35 all right six plus five that's 11 carry the one five six that is 61 to nothing iowa was outscored 61 to nothing against competent opponents with offenses that can move the football in its last two outings of 2023 technically 24 was new year's day i hear you yet four people who vote for the ap poll decided that Iowa deserved to be in the top 25 despite being outscored 61 to nothing in its final two outings of the season over Tennessee, a team that just shut it out 35 nothing. Makes absolutely no sense to me. Those four people, okay? Dave Preston, he works for WOP, w WTOP in the Washington, D.C. area. That's a TV station. You have Ron Counts, who works for the Idaho... Stakesman, I guess that's a newspaper, covers Boise State, okay? You have Chuck Landon, who works for the Herald-Dispatch in West Virginia. And then you have a guy that you've heard of, that you've watched for years, Reese Davis. Come on, Reese Davis, you're smarter than that. College game day host, I mean, he's all over ESPN, uh, you know, talking podcasts on ESPN. I mean, it's Reese Davis. He's a household name, ESPN. He's smarter than this. Yet Reese Davis ranked Iowa in its final, his final top 25 poll, but not Tennessee. Makes absolutely no sense. And again, at the end of the day, you won nine regular season games or eight regular season games. You won nine games at the end of the year with a Citrus Bowl victory. Sure, it's fun. It's exciting. It is not a horrible year whatsoever. Okay. 
but you're not hanging banners. I get it. So it's it's this whole discussion is a lot about nothing, but I just think it's kind of funny how people think sometimes. And I'm going to be honest with you. I mean, Reese Davis watches tons of college football because I watch his work. He's on, he's on all these shows. He does his job. Now, I don't think he made a smart decision here, but he does his job. I don't know these other three people. They could be great people. I'm sure they do great work. I'm not trying to uh, disparage their work whatsoever. Uh, but these four are examples, three really, because I, I know about Reese Davis. These three are examples, potentially, of people who are AP voters that don't watch college football, okay? Um, I have never been an AP voter, so easy for me to talk and ridicule and all that, but you know, I've never been an AP voter. If I was ever approached with the opportunity to be a voter for the AP, I would decline, and I've always said that. Why? Because I cover Tennessee football. I am on the Tennessee football beat, which means, say Tennessee kicks off at 3.30, okay? I'm at the stadium at 1 o'clock. All right, maybe a little bit earlier. I'm sitting there. Sure, I've got games pulled up in the press box, and I try to watch college game day, and I'll try to watch games, you know, if I can before I head to the stadium. But my sole focus is covering Tennessee football. There, you know, who's out there doing pregame warmups? What recruits are in house? You know, who who's the who coming to this Tennessee football game? Starting lineup announcements, uh, getting news and notes right before the game. You know, I'm working. I'm not watching every college football game that I like to be watching. Then there's the game, right? Tennessee football game that lasts about three and a half hours. Then I'm, I'm, I'm letting you behind the curtain a little bit to see what a day in the life of a, a beat reporter is. You go down and you do post game press conferences and all that. And your stand ups on the field. That's at least another hour. Okay. Then you come back up to the stadium. And if you're good at your job, you're there for a couple hours doing work, writing a column, writing a gamer, not a gamer. Your gamer's already out by then writing a column, doing a post a game podcast, uh, doing a recruiting roundup, you know, right, doing, doing, doing whatever the case is. Okay. And then for me, I go home and I start doing the rewatch and you know, that's why I love noon games. Cause I can get a little bit of the rewatch done before I go to bed, wake up Sunday morning. Um, you know, we don't go to church as much as I like to during the season. Um, I start the rewatch. I write my column on Sunday. I do my podcast and I get ready for a live show. My point is again, sure. I'm busy and I'm not trying to say pat on the back here. I love what I do. I wouldn't change a thing about it. I love, 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 love what I do. Okay. It brings me joy. And I hope you guys like my work as well. My point is I cover Tennessee. My life revolves around Tennessee. So if you are a beat reporter, which I assume that some of these people are, you don't have time to watch as many college football games as you'd like. Sure, you can get maybe a game or two on Saturday around your game if you're lucky, but it's in the back burner while you're working, right? You don't have time to watch college football. So again, I don't know these three people. Again, I'm, I'm excluding Reese Davis because I know he watches college football, but maybe these three people kind of fit in that criteria, right? If you are a beat reporter and you cover a team, you should not be allowed to be an AP voter because you don't watch college football. You don't. Again, it would be an honor to be an AP voter, but I would decline it. I would decline it. Honestly, if I got approached about being a Heisman voter, I would decline that as well because I don't get to watch enough football as I'd like. I watch football as much as I can. And for Tennessee's opponent, I go back and I try to skim and you know watch some tape of Tennessee's next opponent and everything. So I see a lot of football. But for as much as a casual viewer on a Saturday afternoon gets to watch, I don't get to watch that much. So just another example of how it's so flawed. And can you can you believe? And I'm media, so I'm putting myself in this conversation. Can you believe? that we as in voters and media used to determine who won a national championship. I mean, when you think about it now, it's just outrageous. We used to determine who played for the national championship during the BCS era, right? That's just wild. Thank God for the playoff and thank goodness for an expanded playoff. There's going to be a lot of blowouts, but at least more teams get the opportunity to play for a championship. And uh, I'm excited about that. So I cannot believe there are seven individuals, seven individuals who left Tennessee off the final AP ballot. Makes no sense. And furthermore, I cannot believe that there are four individuals, Reese Davis included, that put Iowa but left out Tennessee. You can have Iowa up there along with Tennessee. Iowa won 10 games this year. Okay. They were a solid football team. Ended so horribly wrong, but they were a solid football team. They deserved to probably be ranked, but. The team that just selected them 35 nothing in the Citrus Bowl, you're not going to put them out there in the top 25 as well? Makes no sense. Makes no sense. People, lazy and bad at their jobs, point blank. Um, furthermore, last one here in this little segment. 
Well, one more note on that. Tennessee, you know, just going to show you seven people left Tennessee off the ballot in the final AP Top 25. Tennessee ranked as high as number 13 by a John Wilner, um, who does uh, radio up in the Northwest, radio up in the Seattle area. He's syndicated. He had Tennessee as high as number 13. So it just kind of goes to show you how some people view a specific program, in this case, Tennessee. So furthermore, now that was the AP. Let's go to the coaches poll. Tennessee finished both 17 and the AP and the coaches poll, the final polls. Two head coaches from around the country, two head coaches did not rank Tennessee in their final top 25. Um, one of them was John Summerall from Troy. Okay. You know, that's, that's fine. Whatever. Um, the other one, let me, let me give you a hint. He played here in November and he had some, he had some beef with Josh Heupel after the game. Um, it is crybaby Jim Mora Jr. Former NFL head coach, former NFL coordinator, He's been at UConn for a couple years now. He's, um, I mean, he's a football lifer, right? Made a career out of it, but um, he did not like the way Tennessee was trying to score up until the final buzzer with duh, 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 their third, fourth, and fifth string quarterbacks. They deserve to play as well. <laughs> I mean, they deserve to play as well. There's a difference in keeping your starters in there and running it up. Now, at the very end of the Citrus Bowl, I was going to say, man, you should probably not try to punch that in there at the end, but even if you did, you're playing your fourth and fifth stringers, right? Run the offense. Jim Moore didn't like that. Jim Moore was frustrated. Also, UConn was on Tennessee's side of the field before pregame warmups, and Tennessee didn't like that. Told them to go back to their side of the 50. I mean, that that is football etiquette 101, right? If you play JV football, you know that one team warms up on that side of the field. The other team warms up on this side of the field. It's really not that complicated. One plus one equals two. But UConn, before the Yang came over to Tennessee's sideline, Tennessee didn't like that. And so Jim Mora took exception to that as well. Can we say Jim Mora holds a grudge? Tennessee beat them, what, was it 56-3? to three? I can't remember, whatever it was. Um, Jim Mora did not vote for Tennessee in his final college uh, coaches poll. I just find that really, really hilarious, honestly. So, end of the day, this segment, it's just to have fun. Doesn't change anything. You're not hanging banners. But I, I just, if you do your job correctly, which I'm sure these these individuals do, going back to the AP poll conversation, if you do your job correctly, like I'm sure these individuals do, you don't have time to watch college football. Therefore, you shouldn't have a vote. Just my opinion. Just my opinion. Again, these people could be great people. I don't know them. I don't know their work. They cover teams that I don't necessarily follow. I mean, I know Reese Davis. They could be doing a great job. I'm just pointing out who left Tennessee off the ballot. So, Anyway, um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Getting on a little, uh, getting on a little high horse there talking. Um, I'm, I'm sure you guys wouldn't mind, but there's going to be ball haters anywhere. Going to be ball haters anywhere. You just got to block them out. All right, when we come back, Tennessee is going to be playing basketball at Georgia, trying to pick themselves up off a, it's a quad one road loss. Again, it's not a horrible loss, but uh, it was a tough loss the other night. How did Tennessee respond to Georgia? Who are the Georgia Bulldogs? I'll tell you that here in just a moment, right here on Locked On Balls. Game time is a fast and easy way to buy your last minute tickets to not only your sporting events, but to your concerts, to your uh, music events, to um, any type of event that's in your area, maybe comedy shows. Thompson Bowling Arena at the Food City Center, they've got a lot going on. Lady Vols basketball, Lady Vols volleyball, of course, men's basketball, concerts there a couple times a year, monster truck rallies. You can buy tickets to any event at the uh, Food City Center, at the Bijou Theater, at the Tennessee Theater. All that and more, that's on the Game Time app. Last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, the best price guarantee, Game Time. It takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Plus, it's got the lowest price guarantee, which means if you buy a ticket with Game Time, but you find a ticket in your same section cheaper on another app or another service, they are going to credit you 110% of that value of the ticket. That's that's pretty good right there. What you need to do is, I encourage you to do this, download the Game Time app, create an account, use promo code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. Again, go ahead and create that account. Redeem code locked on L O C K E D O N for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Tennessee Hoops preview. Tennessee and Georgia. That's coming up next right here on Locked On Balls. All right, boys and girls, got a couple minutes left here. Appreciate you guys for being here, and thank you so much for always watching and supporting the show, for DMing me, for tweeting me. Uh, means more to me, I promise you, than you guys will ever know. I, I I assure you that. 
Hope you guys have a great week. It's going to be weird. Like, sure, I'll, I'll have podcasts out that I pre-recorded for next week, but I won't be talking to you guys next week, and so it'll be a little bit weird. Um, don't hold this against me, but when we, we were on our honeymoon this time last year, me and my wife, um, <laughs> no, it's going to make me sound really, really bad. I don't even want to say it. I'll say it. I don't care. I was like, towards the end of it, I was like, man, I can't wait to get back to work. And she looks at me, she's like, what the heck? We're on our honeymoon. I'm like, no, no, no. I'm having a great time. Having a having an awesome time. Didn't want to leave, but it just goes to show you, like, I, I love what I do. I missed what I did being away from her for a week. So, um, again, super hashtag blessed. B-L-E-S-T, blessed to do what I do. All right, let's talk Tennessee hoops. Tennessee basketball, 11-4 and four now. 77 to 72 laws, whatever the score was at Mississippi State on Wednesday. Um, first half, which was atrocious, 10 turnovers. Zakai Ziegler played phenomenal basketball all night long, but nobody helped him in the first half. He had 10 points. And I think the next highest was like four or five points for Jonas Adu. You go on, you tie the game briefly. Dal- Dalton Connect scores 26 points in the second half, 28 overall. Zakai Ziegler taps out at 26 points. It was a two man show. Uh, your two big boys, uh, o- Toby Awaka and Jonas Adu, foul out. Um, but nobody else helps. Your two super seniors, Josiah Jordan James and San- Santiago Vescovi, I believe, had a combined five points. Just wasn't good enough. And that that's why it's disappointing. And and I'm intrigued to see how Tennessee can respond and, and kind of pick themselves up off the mat. You're going down to Georgia, who's 2-0 and in SEC play. 12-3 and overall. It's going to be a game tomorrow at noon Eastern, televised on ESPN2. Uh, Georgia so far in SEC play, they've won against Arkansas on Wednesday, 76-66, so a 10-point win against Arkansas. They won at Mizzou, 75-68 this past Saturday. Other Power 5, maybe notable wins, I guess, compared to a pretty lousy strength of schedule to begin things. They beat Georgia Tech. They beat Wake Forest. They beat in Florida State. Losses on the season, three. Um, they lost to Oregon, 82-71. They lost to Miami and Providence back-to-back in the Bahamas. There, I think it was that Thanksgiving tournament. They lost to Miami, 79-68. Lost to Providence, 71-64, and that was in Bahamas. But since then, they've won 10 in a row. They're on a 10-game win streak, and so they're kind of feeling themselves right now. Um, overall, Noah... Uh, Thomason guard leads the way with 12.7 points per game. He's shooting at a 45% clip, which is not, not bad whatsoever. Jabri Abdur Rahim, 12.3 points per game. He's pretty solid 41% from behind the yard. So he's shooting the ball, the deep ball pretty well. You have Russell Tishwa. I, I screwed up his name. I'm sorry. Um, he's your leading rebounder, almost seven boards a game. You have Justin Hill and uh, Blue Kane. You guys know that name. Tennessee was in on that recruitment of Blue Kane. Both guards, both back backcourt players, both coming off the bench. Uh, but you got Justin Hill, who leads the team with 48 overall assist and 9.7 points per game. He plays about 24 minutes a game. He's a good, really good six man. Then Blue Kane comes in, averaging seven points a game in about 18 minutes off the bench. So you know, not a not an overall great team, but one ten in a row. 2-0 in SEC play, uh, kind of feeling themselves right now. Let's see, according to Ken Palm, Tennessee's the number six team in the country. Georgia's the number 72nd team in the country. Offensive efficiency, according to Ken Palm, Tennessee's at number 21. Georgia is at number 118. Defensive efficiency, Tennessee's number two. Georgia is at number 42. Strength of schedule, Tennessee has the 10th best strength of schedule, while Georgia strength of schedule strength of schedule comes in at number 134. Uh, The net rankings, Tennessee, after the loss on Wednesday, slid back to number six. Georgia is up to number 82, but the Bulldogs are 0-1 in quad one games so far this season. And of course, Saturday is going to be very much a quad one game. So again, it's an opportunity for Tennessee. If you go in there and and, and you go through struggles and, you know, Vescovy and James combined for five points again or whatever it was, you might lose if you don't get a Herculean effort from Dalton Connect in the second half or Zakai Ziegler all game long. You might lose. I mean, you got to be better. You got to hit your shots on the outside. You can't turn the basketball over. Just atrocious basketball play in the first half. Got to be clean. Got to be clean. And uh, Tennessee needs this win. Tennessee needs this win really bad, especially just kind of the the ugly, nasty taste that's in your mouth from Wednesday night, right? Uh, Georgia. 
averages 75.4 points per game, allows 69.1 points per game. They shoot at 43% from the field. And um, again, they've won 10 games in a row. We will see how Tennessee responds at Georgia Saturday at noon on ESPN2. All right. I'm going on vacation. (laughs) Hope you guys enjoy your next week. Hope you guys enjoy your weekend. Again, I'll have my phone in me. I'll just be hanging out, drinking beer, and um, wife will have pina coladas. I'll have uh, my favorite kind of tropical drink is um, mojitos. God, I love mojitos. I have I'll have a bunch of mojitos. I have uh, I'll have um, some uh, s- some Mexican beer, and uh, it's gonna be fun. And uh, I'm gonna be taking it easy next week. It's gonna be 85 to 86 degrees. No rain right now in the forecast. So. When your guys are at work and you're sitting there going through it in this chilly winter time in East Tennessee, you'd be thinking about me. I'll be sitting poolside, maybe go a dip in the ocean, be having a good time. Uh, but in all seriousness, hope you guys have a great week. Can't wait to get back and talk to you following next week. If anything big happens, which I'm sure something big will happen, um, promise you I will have a running tab on my phone of things I'm going to hit on on Monday and Tuesday show. And uh, I can't wait for that. Uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend, guys. Thanks so much for being here. This is Locked on Balls.